All right, the new set is here, and we have some pretty sick cards. Um, we are looking back at a old archetype, and we're bringing to it a few new fun cards that I think are really, really cool. So this is going to be the Venerated Rot Priest, quote-unquote Storm deck. Uh, sometimes you see it in Storm, sometimes you see it just as a uh, creature combo deck. What we want to do here is get a bunch of Venerated Rot Priests onto the battlefield, either through Finale of Devastation or, you know, just through drawing them naturally through Brainstorm. And we want to uh, pretty much get that down as our turn one uh, play as much as possible. From there, we want to do a lot of things that allow us to trigger Rot Priest. If they remove it, we'll keep it safe with things like Tamiya's uh, safekeeping. Uh, three Steps Ahead allows us to either, uh, this is one of the new cards obviously, um, this is a very flexible card that allows us to either counter spell for 3 mana, for 4 mana, uh, create a token copy of Venerated Rot Priest, or for 3 mana, uh, draw 2 and discard uh, discard 1, which is pretty freaking sweet. Uh, so very excited about this card. It is at a rare. I'm only playing one of them right now. Uh, we'll see if it comes up very much. Fading Hope, always very good, uh, allows us to either bounce our Rot Priest to save it from a kill spell, which also triggers it again, or we can just remove one of our opponent's creatures. Consider, Brainstorm, just card draw, nothing new there. Demonic Tutor, um, you know, another piece of glue that holds this deck together. We are running Ivy in this build. Uh, this is not always in these uh, Venerated Rot Priest builds, but with the amount of targeting that we're going to be trying to do today, um, we do want to uh, copy spells and have them target Ivy as much as possible. Um, three steps ahead, you know, one very good example of that. Spend our uh, four mana here, copy our Venerated Rot Priest, also get a token copy of Ivy. That just triggers Venerated Rot Priest again. It's so perfect. Another cool one is uh, Fleeting Reflection. Target creature you control gains hexproof, untap that creature, and it becomes a copy of one of the other, other target creatures. So this can uh, either copy our opponent's creatures, since it just targets a creature. It can copy our Venerated Rot Priest, which is going to be the primary use case. And um, yeah, cool new card. I'm pretty hot on it. Uh, seems like it's been pretty good so far. I've played a few games with it, and things have been nice. Finale of Devastation obviously is going to find our Venerated Rot Priest for three mana. We can also get an Ivy if that's something that's necessary. And we can also get our third creature in this deck, Kira the Great Glass Spinner, a three mana 2-2 two -two flying spirit that has a really, really good ability. Whenever uh, your creatures become the target of a spell or ability for the first time each turn, you counter that spell or ability. So this means a lot of stuff, right? Not only can they not attack Venerated Rot Priest, or not only can they not kill Venerated Rot Priest, uh, except for having two pieces of removal, that's obviously going to trigger Rot Priest twice. Um, it also is pretty important for them to kill Kira, which um, itself also has this ability. So this means that in addition to the Venerated Rot Priest eventually being dealt with, Kira is going to need to be targeted as well, and that'll need to have two removal spells pointed at it. So if there's a Rot Priest on the battlefield, you're getting two free triggers before they even kill the Rot Priest, unless they decide to not do it that way. Um, so Healy is in this deck. Uh, this is just kind of an interesting one because we want to find a way to copy Venerated Rot Priests uh, and her minus two that gets um, that gets fueled by her static ability when we cast non-creature spells, which we do plan to do, obviously, um, allows us to copy the Venerated Rot Priest. So that's great. And then uh, because there are some new cards to play, we are running a few of the higher end ones. Common Deer, a really interesting one. Um, you can exile two cards to play the spell's mana cost. This is something that is more or less new to Timeless and MTG in general, but pretty common to a lot of the older historic, not historic, the older uh, maternal formats. Uh, so cool to have some of these cards hit the arena play, which is fun. Um, so yeah, basically uh, gain, contr uh, gain control of a non-creature spell, you get to retarget it. So this allows you to basically retarget a spell onto one of your other creatures instead of onto the Rot Priest. It's kind of just generally going to be used as a um, as a as a counter spell essentially. That's a good card. Hopefully we get to play it today. Uh, just trying one out right now. We'll see how it feels. And then the other one, Oko the Ringleader, just a four mana end game planeswalker. Um, at the beginning of combat, it can become a venerated Rot Priest or whatever else that we need to do. Um, and then basically being able to draw cards is great, being able to uh, target our opponent's stuff with things like Fading Hope, things like that. Also trigger him, so that's great. Um, we get to make some Elks, and then we can also just um, basically copy all of our non-land permanents at uh, the minus side, which is cool. We'll see if he gets played at all today, but the main hero of the story is Venerated Rot Priest, so we're going to try to make that work. 
Um, we are running Mystic Sanctuaries here because we do need to replay these Tamiyo safekeepings, all these things that target, all these card draw spells, and pretty much everything that keeps venerated Rock Priest alive. So you'll see me fetching for Mystic Sanctuary here and there. That being said, that is the deck here. Hope you guys enjoy this one. Should be another fun video. Make sure to keep the love up with the new content coming out here for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Like and comment helps me a bunch. Um, subscribe if you're new for videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday if you like what's going on here. Uh, I've taken up enough of the time here, so let's go ahead and get right into round one. Here we go. All right, here we go. Round one. We have an Ivy. We would much rather have a Rot Priest, though. I think I'm probably interested in mulliganing. If they keep it, I'll think a little bit about it, but I can consider this a six card hand due to the commandeer. Um, kind of a similar hand here. I think we go one more and then we keep even kind of a mid range hand. Uh, this one does have a rot priest though, so we do keep it. It does a turn two rot priest, which I do hate. And then we'll just take one of these two spells here. All right, maybe we draw an untapped green source. So that could be nice. Um, Looks like we won't here, so we will just end up playing the Rot Priest with uh, protection. I think I need more mana before I can go for a Finale of Devastation. Let's avoid a Thought Seize here. Bushwhack, okay. We do need to uh, worry about removal. This Tamiyo Safekeeping is about to be very good. Um, oh, nice. Second Rot Priest is huge. So we'll go Rot Priest here, see if they want to do anything removal wise. I think I'm going to be passing with held up mana here. Tyvar, oh sweet, that's totally fine. Um, consider, oh do we want Saheeli? No, we want lands. That's not quite a land, but we do get to target things two at a time here, which is great. Let's see if they find something to bring back to the battlefield. No, they actually just decided to plus. All right, so another green mana here means that we get second venerated rot priest here, and we are off to the races in terms of damage. We're putting poison to the face here. We don't care anything about Tyvar really. If they can get stuff back to the battlefield, uh, then we'll start to deal with him. But for now, it doesn't really matter. Um, they're going to make us make a tough decision here. Let's see what our choices are. Top three, and then they basically get to make us make the decision. All right, cool. So what are they going to want here? We'll have to see if there's any notable combo pieces in there. Um, we get to see Skyfish or Spider. ETB you get to sack. This is another creature when you do destroy target non-land permanent. This doesn't really matter as far as Tyvar is concerned. I'm pretty uh, likely to give them this one. Destroy each creature with power two or less is kind of tough. I almost want to give them the second pile. Uh, but Gix's command casts for five. They have four mana. Uh, I think I can play around this just fine. We'll give them this pile. That should be somewhat surprising to them. I hope that it is. And uh, I do hope that they don't hit anything good here. Did I see a creature here? I did see a creature here. It is uh, too big, right? No, it is. It's power, right? Yeah, man. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that is the one. Um, I suppose I just get rid of this for right now. It, it does represent two toxic counters, and that might end up being important for me. We don't need that. We just need some uh, way to survive this Gix's command. I'll move to my turn here. We're going in with the Venerated Rot Priest once again. I could have one hit Tyvar. Not totally sure. Mystic Sanctuary doesn't quite hit yet. I think I'm just going face. We don't really care about the Tyvar that much. Um, and then Mystic Sanctuary is probably better held in hand for when I get my next island. But actually, Odawara is not even an island, so maybe I was better to just play that. Alright, so no Gix's command yet. Alright, so they're going to make some creatures here, it's fine. Looking for them to be able to not attack me here. Oh, well, no, this is fine. They've tapped everything. Let's see if Tyvar can hit. 
Tyberg doesn't currently have a two drop in the graveyard, right? So they have to get lucky here. Or uh, yeah, that's right. They can just untap Tyber, sure. Take my hand. So I think we might just drop this Mystic Sanctuary next turn. Destroy target token and opponent controls. Alright, whatever. Another Tamiya of safekeeping. I guess this just comes out, and then basically we are uh, at 9 poison here. We will pass, and uh, maybe use one of the Tamiya of safekeepings here to get a block in. We obviously want to dodge Gix's command. So there's the Gix's command here. We will uh, give that thing hexproof. Right, and then we will Tamiya safekeeping the other one. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be them going to seven. Their stuff all dies. And they have no more mana, so we hit them for another two, and then Tamiya safekeeping one more time, and we are good. <coughs> oh no, that did survive. Why? Oh, power two or less. So silly. Well, if they attack to gain life, that would be bad for them. And it doesn't really matter. They're going to die anyway. Yeah, they can tie of it is what it is, but we're just going to Tamiya safekeeping the other one. Oh no, you're actually just looking for another creature. And that's fine. That's uh, more or less kind of what I was expecting to see happen. <coughs> Alrighty. So we can go Flooded Strand here. We will uh, wait to see what happens after blockers. And I think we should be able to get our 10th poison counter in right here. Uh, it basically has to be exactly fatal push they block one we're gonna give it a hex proof i want to do it this way instead of waiting so like if they had cast the fatal push then i would have uh, done something about this but now we do leave them open to fatal pushing the other venerated rock priest but that's fine because we only need one venerated rock priest to live and that's a poison victory here we go so far, I've done a mill deck and now a poison deck, and we're really covering a lot of the alternate win cons in this game. So far, pretty good. Great round one, I'd say, and uh, let's go into round two. All right, round two, here we go. Uh, we're definitely looking for our guy, the Venerated Rot Priest. If this had some green, I could see myself taking it. Um, instead, we do find a good hand here. Um, I don't want to play the Ivy this game. Maybe I just drop the Consider. And then we just shock in a Breeding Pool here. Ah, there goes the Thought Seize. So we're going to lose our Rot Priest if they know it's good for them. Oh, they just take Brainstorm. I do not care. Here's Polluted Delta. We're going to shock in for that Rot Priest. Down to 17. They must have removal for it. I'm going to have to hold up Fleeting Reflection now. Yeah, that sounds about right. Well, we trade them for Poison Counter. It is what it is. We can always search the Sabbath Graveyard with our finale. And actually, look at what we draw. It is our friend. Um, I think for this one, I'm going to go ahead and just start with the Ivy. This is going to get me, hopefully, to draw land next turn and then be able to play Venerated Rot Priest Hold Up Fleeting Reflection. That does give me a lot of counters. Um, it's pretty cool because this double targets. Uh, so with multiple Rot Priests, it can just go absolutely ham. Um, sure. It's a little awkward with Ivy, though. Um, so I think that we just go in. We don't really care if Ivy uh, dies, I'd say. I'm going to hold up here. We can push damage for a bit. There's a death right Shaman. I'm not super pressed about that. This Finale of Devastation would be nice to have on the battlefield, though. I think I just continue to attack here. And turn, say go. We're just vibing.
Alright, so the take. Surprisingly, not my Rot Priest. I would uh, expect them to want that out of the battlefield as soon as possible. Ooh, Bloodbraid Elf is tough. Alright. Let's see what they find. Colgon's Command. Alright, could be worse. So discard deals two damage to Ivy. Uh, I mean, I suppose I could just become a copy of Deathrite Shaman. Um, we'll discard the three steps ahead, I think. Not going to be the day for it today, sadly. Uh, no blocks. They don't have a land to get rid of, but now we find our land. That's great. So I think I can go Rot Priest into Fleeting Reflection. <coughs> uh, we unfortunately don't have the correct creature set up in order to uh, copy optimally, but we'll be able to get essentially three copies out of the Fleeting Reflection. Uh, we do attack, and then we'll just end up copying the Blood Braid Elf, I think. Try to eat the Deathrite Shaman if the uh, opportunity arises. Ooh, a Shieldred's tough. Uh, we can copy their Shieldred, though. Alright. Um, it is what it is. I... Don't know if I take damage or not here. It's hard to say. I almost want to say I pass, but it really depends on what I draw. I think I just pass to take no blocks. We are going to draw take some damage here. Sahili would be good. We'll see if Sahili survives. She at least has a little bit of a lightning rod. We're not attacking here. We might have to chump with Ivy. Uh, but Venerated Rot Priest can kind of go ham with this Fleeting Reflection, though. If Ivy's somehow allowed to survive and we get a copy off of Sahili, that would be so insane. I don't think it happens, though. Uh, I can Fleeting Reflection now, though. Yeah, it's just a copy, so we're only going to get one token here. Bunch of Goyfs now. So let's see. Will I die? They want to kill Sahili. They're going to get to kill Sahili, unfortunate. Do I block with Ivy? I don't know. I don't think I can do anything about this. Alright, and I don't think we can kill them here either. Oh, here's another Rot Priest. That gets me close, actually. Um, we can make Tarmogoyf copies to bounce off the Tarmogoyfs. And then just see what happens. Um, if we put them down a little bit of life, it doesn't matter. We'll end turn. If they target any of my stuff, though, it'd be pretty good for me. So if they deal some damage to something. We'll go to four. That's unfortunate. Here's a Goyf. Yeah. Deathrite Shaman. And they're going to go in for the attack. And now I purposefully didn't even do the math in my head. We're casting Fleeting Refraction on one creature, one other creature. They get four. And I think we're actually just going to end up at nine. That's so sad. Um, yeah, we were so close to killing here. Uh, and then... Yeah, that's unfortunately going to be it here. Um, yeah, it's uh, we were supposed to target Ivy, turning her into copy of Venerated Rot Priest. Ivy gets a copy targeting Venerated Rot Priest again. Yeah, that's what we were supposed to do. Okay, so uh, I either that was a misplay, but like at the end of the day, even if we had gotten it right, that would have been nine poison instead of ten. So didn't really matter in the the greater scheme of things. It was pretty insignificant. Uh, anyway, that's round two in the bag. Here comes round three. All right, this is round three. We have a Rot Priest and an Ivy. I'm down to keep. I didn't really even look at the lands, but uh, they do have what I want. We're going to start with the Mystic Sanctuary. 
I'd like to think about having protection for the Rot Priest when it comes down. Ooh, double Rot Priest, that's nice. We're gonna start with Ivy. I really want to draw a land here. One land for Fleeting Reflection. Come on, let me have it. Alright, they let us go. And, oh, it's just Akira. Okay, well, we'll go Brainstorm. Look for a land. They're gonna Bowmasters me here, aren't they? Oof. That's not good. So there goes the Ivy. Um, we'll put pretty much not the Flooded Strand into the library, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I can get set up for a Kira, which does hurt the Bowmasters quite a lot. Okay, that is good. So I want the Kira. I guess I get rid of and then draw a Fleeting Reflection. Or maybe, no, I get rid of Tamiya Safekeeping plus Finale. Yeah. So we play this Flooded Strand. Yeah, yeah. You get it? You got a big uh, Orc Army. Sure. <sighs> Man, I think I need to just go for more mana here. And so... What would happen if I just hung two Rock Priests out to dry? Would it be so bad? Maybe it wouldn't. We do need another blue, so I'm going to just shock this. And then we just hope that these two survive. I drop Akira, and then they're more or less protected. Then I can go for Fleeting Reflection, and uh, maybe we get moving. I think we're going to have no such luck here. They are reading the card. They probably have a kill spell. But, you know, we tried. Oh, it's just an Underworld Dreams. We have successfully dodged. And now we know that we're playing against the uh, card draw phase deck. So... This is fine, we draw. Mystic Sanctuary doesn't quite trigger, sad. Um, we're gonna go to nine here. Here's Akira. Uh, we do attack with everything. We're planning to take all the damage here. And they're gonna get two toxic counters. After this, we go for Fleeting Reflection, which is, I believe, four per if Kira is allowed to stick around. So this is really good for us. I think we can win on the next turn. Assuming they don't delete our board or kill me. Necro. Oh, it's just a setup turn. I think that means we're good. Oh, it looks like they're just going slightly above hand size here. I am definitely not blocking this. We will take f uh, four go down to five damage left. All right, and they have no mana to cast their spells. I think we are ready to go. All right, so we're going to have Kira become a copy of a venerated rock priest. Big triggers. Oh yeah. And it's fine. We actually don't really need to uh, do anything about the actual um, resolution of my spell. That part's all good. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just do the same thing again. Kira, target, prop priest, and it's good. That will be enough of the poison counters to kill. Sweet, so that kind of came out of nowhere for the opponent, I hope. Uh, turn four win with poison. I think that's pretty strong. Uh, four is generally the historic benchmark for a on-time kill. I think that in timeless, sometimes you get a little bit quicker than that with things like the show and tell deck. Uh, but to have something, uh, to have a kill enabled at turn four for a deck that for the most part, hasn't really been seeing any play in Timeless, is really, really cool. So very excited to see Rot Priest back in the format as a viable deck to play. Hope you guys feel the same about it. Hope you guys get some games in. Let me know how they are. Uh, anyway, that was round three. Here comes round four. All right, this is round four. Here we go. Um, no Rot Priest. Not super excited about that. And Ivy is a good start. 
we're gonna try to keep a hand without a rot priest and see how badly it functions uh, I firmly believe that this deck is probably a mull until you hit what you need kind of deck uh, in this case we're going to start to surveil until we find what we need um, we're gonna play Ivy late I think she's better when we can actually copy stuff it's always hard to make sure that um, Fleeting Reflection doesn't totally ruin us because we need to just copy, um, we need to make sure that our legends are the first thing that's copied uh, before anything else happens. Uh, we'll put away a Flooded Strand, I think. That's essentially the same thing as thinning the deck. Play a Consider, End Step. Alright, fine. No more safekeeping, don't need it. Sahili, that's a good card. I am very excited to create a Sahili board. Let's do that. Here's a Sahili. And next turn we go Ivy plus safekeeping and all that good stuff. And so all we really need to do is find one Rot Priest. Malakir Blood Priest. What are we doing with this guy? Party Life Drain. How interesting. Let's do Flooded Strand, we can decide if we want an untapped land or not. Here's Ivy, we have the Tamiya Safekeeping to keep her alive, we'll end step. Or move to our end step, that is. <clears throat> they actually just pass right on back, we'll find a Surveil land here. Uh, no Surveil lands, that's right. Um, we will put this in top then. We now meet the requirement for a Mystic Sanctuary. Oko the Ringleader is now another card that we can play. I mean, that's a absolutely great start for us. There's Oko. That does make us a token, and I suppose we have not committed a crime, so we'll need to discard two things. I think that Common Deer is probably not great right now. <coughs> And then we discard the land, I'd say. We can also discard Brainstorm, put it back on top with a Polluted Delta Fetch. Well, for that reason, uh, we can get back Commandeer when we want it. Alright. Do I attack? Um, we're going to submit zero here. I don't want to make him into a 1-1. One, one. We can attack here pretty safely. And we pass, so now we're just looking for a venerated drop priest, and our board is set up to do great things. We're just gonna pass back, I think. Love to see it. Alright, give me a rot priest. How about that? That's not a rot priest, but it is a card that finds a rot priest. <coughs> we're gonna put two lands back. <coughs> I'm gonna draw the Vantress. <coughs> um actually can't cast Demonic Tutor currently. Let's fetch. And actually, whoa, did I really make this deck building mistake? That's hilarious. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to need to make sure that when you guys play this deck, and I'm going to edit this after the video, obviously, um, you've, you put some actual uh, black mana in your mana base. That's going to be pretty important when you want to cast Demonic Tutor off of uh, something. Anyway, uh, is there something that I want to put back in my, uh, or not on my library, uh, back from the graveyard on top of my library? Maybe the Brainstorm, I'm like low-key not really sure. Um, and I think actually we don't want to do that. We'll just take the tapped Breeding Pool because we want to get closer to our Rot Priest. <coughs> Alright, well, let's just draw a discard again. We'll get rid of an Ivy. And then I think one Vantress can go back. Or actually, the Demonic Tutor is straight useless to me right now, so that's fine. No need for Sahili. We'll just attack for one. We'll submit zero on the Oko. Um, and then the minus five is on the board next turn. That's pretty cool. We'll just need to make sure that we can uh, get a Rot Priest, copy with Sahili, then activate Oko. That's the order that we want to be doing here. Okay, Marauding Blight Priest, we're getting a little scary here. They can eventually combo. Yeah, Fleeting Reflection, it is what it is. That mana will eventually be useful. 
None of my cards do much currently. We'll play a Vantress here. Uh, again, we're going to do the Oko thing. Draw two, discard two. Let's get rid of one safekeeping, one breeding pool. We'll brainstorm now. Make another servo. Dang, not what we wanted. Um, so now we're going to be brainstorm locked for a little bit. Um, maybe I go Mystic Sanctuary, bring something back. Uh, we do have to draw a card for the turn, so we'll make it Mystic Sanctuary. And yeah, just a little bit of a brainstorm lock here. I suppose we'll just scry two away at the end step and maybe brainstorm again. Okay. Submit zero, say go. We're just hoping our opponent doesn't kill us yet because we are so on the verge of greatness here. These are all the moon shots that I put into this deck, hoping that they would uh, see the light of day. And uh, it may or may not happen, we will see. Okay, just a Marauding Bright, Blight Priest. A Vito kills me, but uh, we haven't seen him yet, so that's great. <coughs> yep, yep. <coughs> Down to 14. So we scry. Scry away. We draw three. Make another turbo. Here we go. And there's the Rot Priest, finally. Okay. So we'll just go safekeeping, put a Flooded Strand back, <clears throat> and we are going to go as hard as we can here. So, Polluted Delta, Venerated Rot Priest. We want to create a copy. Uh, we will get an untapped land. I think that uh, Brainstorm's fine now. We will put it on top. Uh, so now we want to Sahili copy this. Uh, become a copy of Venerated Rot Priest. We go Fleeting Reflection. Make this a copy of this. Yep, yep. And then we'll finally do that on Ivy. Uh, so Fleeting Reflection, Ivy, become a copy of Rot Priest. Lots of triggers. And if this doesn't kill them, we're going to Oko combo and then Tamio safekeeping for the win. And uh, that's just enough. We made it. Um, the next step was going to be to ultimate uh, Oko, which I'm kind of sad that I didn't do. I should have probably done that uh, the iteration before this. But uh, yeah, you minus Oko. And then uh, now we have one, two, three, four, eight Rot Priests. And uh, our next Tamio safekeeping takes them to like 17 poison. Pretty sweet. Um, cool. Well, uh, that was a great round four. We got the mega combo off. Now we just have one more time giving it a try. Let's uh, hop on to round five. So. All right, here's the last round. My voice is extremely taxed right now, but the games have been really good. Uh, this is the second deck tech I've recorded. Probably going to get back into some more brews tomorrow. So definitely keep an eye out this week for a whole lot of content from this channel. Um, yeah, so we do get the early venerated Rot Priest. Uh, I'm deciding whether or not that needs to go out in turn one or if I want to hold up for Kira. Oh, seeing this mountain for sure, I want to do that. All right, Kamado is what it is. So we go fetch lands first to surveil. Let's get a good start here. Um, after talking all that game, uh, last game about finding black mana for the, um, for the, uh, what is it called? The Demonic Tutor, I have, of course, not actually subbed those in, but by the time you guys get the deck list, um, I'll probably have already swapped, uh, uh, one to two fetch, or one to two shock lands in for, uh, the missing lands there. Foreboding Ruins. All right. And this is just going to be one of those, uh, mono red aggro decks. I can shock a fetch land here and then have Rot Priest, excuse me, Rot Priest plus Tamio's safekeeping. I think I want to do that. So we're gonna do the shock early. Here's a Rot Priest, hold up Tamio's safekeeping. Should be able to get one, uh, one trigger out here. They got creatures now is not great. 
would happily eat a DRC if that's allowed to happen. Uh, we'll make them spend some more spells on our venerated rock priest. Looks like it will get hex roof and indestructible. Perfect. We'll see what they surveil here. So we're getting hit for five, but we can make that down to just two, which is nice. They're reading the rock priest. And then I think we just go for Kira next turn. Following turn Sahili, following turn Fleeting Reflection. That might put enough problem creatures in front of them that they uh, have an issue dealing me damage. We'll see. It gets a little sketchy. I don't know if Sahili comes in time. Alright, so... Go land... Kira here, and then we just have to dodge uh, any removal from them. Perfect. Now we have our flyer. Misha's bobble. It's fine. We'll have four mana here, so we can get Sahili to consider, which is good. That blocks the Swift Spear for one turn, so we might be close enough to finding our equilibrium point here and turning this uh, turning this tide. Let's see what their next play is. I'm sure they can do one of a great many number of things that punish me pretty hard here. This was Bobble looking at my top. Um, I think that Tamiya's safekeeping is probably another happy one to put on top. Fleeting Reflection's also not bad, though. I think I do need the safekeeping, though. So we don't take blocks. Go to seven. Things could get dangerous here. There's a Lurus starting to loop Mishra's Bobble. But that's not the worst thing in the world. Um, any shock does not get through right now. I hope they try to cast it into Akira. That would be hilarious. Yes, shock my venerated rock beast, please. Oh, they might do it. They're thinking. Okay, that makes sense. Skewer the face. You got it. So we're at four. Alright, here we go. And, uh, gonna be the Mystic Sanctuary here. Put Tamiya's safekeeping on top, because I would really love to gain some life. Here's Sahili. And uh, we just pass here. No attacks. And turn. And this is just a little sad consider here. Ooh, a Bowmaster. Alright, well, we'll start with this. We'll create our 1 1. Another Bowmaster. Wow. Well, uh, this doesn't actually, doesn't necessarily kill. It's actually pretty close. Uh, yeah, no, because we don't have the mana, I think we... No, we go to one. Uh, one is still not enough to survive, though. I have to triple, I have to just block everywhere, and yeah, and then we don't survive. Dang, so close, but no cigar. Uh, they just go right into combat here, and we die. Yep, that does look like it's about it. Now, can I do anything about this Orcish Bowmaster? I don't really think so. We'll just go ahead and probably take this damage. All right, so I think we had some super big highs, and uh, the lows were honestly not too bad. I think we had decent games. There are strong decks in this format, and to be able to at least put a good foot forward in every match has been a pretty good thing to see. So I hope, uh, hope you guys take a look at the deck list here and tell me what you think. It's just really exciting to me to see Venerated Rock Priest back on the battlefield. Ever, th ever since this thing came back in the uh, the Phyrexia sets, or well, it's not that it ever came back, it was a new card then. Uh, ever since this got printed then, uh, I always thought it was a very, very cool combo. There's been a lot of experimentation and iteration with this deck. There's been some Storm Lists in Modern and Legacy. There's been some just absolute uh, Death Touch-oriented... Um, 
builds that uh, like to run this card. There are some toxic oriented strategies in their own right, which are pretty good. And uh, yeah, it's just nice to see that those have a place in Timeless. So I think this format's getting really, really good. Um, every, every update that they make to it has been positive so far, at least in my opinion. Um, so a lot of good new things here to come. That being said, that's all for me. Like and comment helps me out and uh, subscribe for videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. There's going to be more Outlaws of Thunder Junction content coming soon, so stick around. I'll see you in the next one.